Hi, this is Mark Galliotti with another rumination on Russian politics and very much clearly on the issue of the day. Ksenia Sobchak, the socialite and kinder opposition figure, her decision to stand for the presidency, or to try and stand for the presidency at least, in 2018. Now, look, I'm not going to dwell on the obvious that this is actually a Kremlin managed opportunity just simply to undermine Navalny and more to the point try and create some degree of excitement around the election to sort of nudge up the participation rate. That, that's pretty obvious. But there are a few points I wanted to make. And the first one is actually just what it says exactly about the approach that they used and the quite stunning, um, almost impressive postmodern cynicism of the approach to actually take Sobchak and have her stand on a, in effect, against everyone, none of the above candidate. What a perversely brilliant way to basically tell the Russian people, so you don't think these elections count for anything? You don't think your vote matters in this false democracy? Well, vote and tell us that's what you think. Because clearly, that's actually not going to make any difference, but this is all an attempt to increase the turnout rate, increase the sense that this is a genuinely legitimate election. Um, as I said, I, I, I have a kind of almost a sneaking admiration um, for this kind of approach, however counter-democratic it genuinely is. But the second point I want to make is that it's not actually just about 2018. Look, Alexei Navalny is not going to be standing. They've made that very, very clear. But then again, Alexei Navalny, I don't think, ever expected to be standing then. This is part of a long game as he builds for himself a position as being the only plausible, credible, serious kind of opposition candidate for the day, whenever that may be, when there are free or at least freer and fairer elections in Russia. Well, so too, I think, by, by creating this faux candidate who will be sort of, in some ways, appealing to at least part of Navalny's potential constituency, the political technologists of the Kremlin and the pres presidential administration are looking beyond just 2018, though that is clearly their main focus, and also just trying to see if they can start to break constituencies away. Not again because I think Sobchak is going to be a key institution or agent, but in some ways as a trial run to see how they actually try and compete with a Navalny in some kind of future campaign. Third point that's worth making, I think, is that this might have some risks for the Kremlin. Democracy is an insidious beast. And even when you try and create just simply the fake seemings of democracy, it can sometimes use that to actually sneak its way into the public consciousness. For Subchak to be plausible, I mean, I, I tweeted last night that I'll begin to possibly believe her the day that she's arrested uh, and obviously framed the way Navalny was, um, and the day that her protests are broken up by the Amon riot police. And okay, a certain amount of fake repression can be arranged, but I'm talking about serious stuff. But more generally, she has to be given some kind of an opportunity to express her views. She will have to be given some degree of airtime on TV. We might even see public debates, not with Putin, but at least with the other dinosaurian fake opposition candidates, Zyuganov for the communists, Zhirinovsky for the Liberal Democrats. And that actually will give a situation, or create a situation, in which actually Sobchak can maybe give some alternative perspectives, raise some issues that might have resonance with the public. Again, I don't want to over, overplay this element, but nonetheless, I think that unless you're very, very deft in how you manage it politically, there always the risk that creating, the more you create the appearance of democracy, the more you create a hunger for the real thing. And actually, political deftness is something, on the whole, that we've not seen from the current generation of political technologists. And the last point to make is, is again, a fairly obvious one. It's, it's, it's the gender point. And again, what it says about the cynicism of the Kremlin's managers, that they went for a relatively photogenic younger female candidate in order to try and sex up the elections. Depressingly enough, though, this is also something that is actually working with the Western correspondents, some of them, I should stress. Um, looking at the coverage, it was noteworthy how many, for example, felt the need to comment on things like, what Sobchak was wearing. Now, I must admit, it's been a long time since I have read a political cover that said things like, President Putin looking relaxed in black suit, white shirt, and blue tie, or whatever, you know, 
we, we, we really should have got beyond this. But more generally, the interesting thing is that, again, if she is given a certain amount of credence in the official media, and they will have to if she's meant to actually have any kind of real function, um, it actually adds to the interesting palette of female potential role models that one finds within uh, Russian politics. I mean, we have Valentina Matvienka, who is the Speaker of the Senate and formerly Governor of St. Petersburg, not a figure for whom I feel any kind of particular political enthusiasm, but nonetheless, you know, is actually a serious hitty-hitty figure within the political management of Russia. Um, also, within Parliament, one can look at Natalia Poplonskaya, the former um, prosecutor of, of Crimea, who has gone into some bizarre monarchic nationalist conservative political directions, but nonetheless, she is that relatively rare figure of a, a Duma member who actually thinks that the job of being a parliamentarian is precisely to do something rather than just simply to troop through the lobby to vote for whatever the Kremlin tells you to vote. So although I would wish that she was doing almost anything else with that mandate, nonetheless, she actually does stand as a figure, as one of the relatively few figures of a, a Duma candidate worthy of the name. Much, much more positively, in my opinion, we have Elvira Nabulina, the chairwoman of the central bank, and very much the technocrat's technocrat, who has been doing a, you know, a very impressive job of trying to address some of the economic constraints of the system, particularly to try and prune away some of the massive array of toxic banks that are still within the system. Long way to go yet. But again, I mean, Nabulina is someone who can really stand forth as, as a figure who's really been carrying out a very difficult job very, very well um, within the system. And now we, we have, in a way, to kind of complete the, sort of the, the spectrum, we have, with quote marks around it, an opposition politician, Ksenia Sobchak, who again can stand as representing a different kind of female role model. Now, again, let's not play this too far. There are still massive levels of sexism within the Russian system, just as there is also actually a residuary level of at least there's the, the discourse of egalitarianism that, that the Soviets talked about, if not necessarily practiced. So to this end, again, if we're looking in, in the long term, although going for Ksenia Sobchak and creating this, this sort of attempt to manufacture the appearance of youth excitement and op an opportunity and alternative within the election is, of course, just simply a, a piece of political technology, Putting it all together, there's always the chance that bit by bit, we're actually seeing elements that, that will have a more positive impact in the longer term. And this, for me, is after all one of the interesting stories of declining late Putinism. The extent to which, by its attempts to preserve itself and extend its control, it actually is time and again creating the seeds, no more than the seeds, for precisely what is actually eventually going to bring it down. I said, mixing his metaphors in a way that makes him quite glad that he's come to the end of his little talk. Thanks very much for watching.